Howdy, Scott in Colorado here. I wanted to talk about negligent discharges, NDs. Uh, in law enforcement, we used to call them ADs, accidental discharge. Uh, that's how it was written in the policy and procedure manuals. Uh, it really isn't an accident. It's, it's, I, I think law enforcement labeled that because, you know, they never wanted to blame themselves. We never want to blame ourselves for our own mistakes, do we? It's always, it's just an accident, all right? No, a negligent discharge is just that, it's negligent. We neglected to either learn, educate ourselves, or we just didn't know, okay? It's neglect. Um, first, I wanted to share some stories uh, about negligent discharges that I know of from my great-grandfather, uh, Sam Goodwin, Samuel Isaac Goodwin. He grew up in uh, Lehigh, Utah. Uh, it's a little town south, uh, it's north of Provo south of uh, Salt Lake City, <clears throat> now in the boondocks. And it's not boondocks anymore. Anyways, uh, Sam uh, later became a, uh, a trick shot. Uh, he'd shoot a uh, 45 Army Colt, and uh, he would shoot uh, little teeny tiny uh, insulin tablets, just tiny tablets off of a board from about 15, 20 feet away in front of rodeo crowds. And he would travel with the traveling rodeo <clears throat> Um, around Utah and uh, he would perform and he would just pull his pull his gun and boom shoot it just from the hip uh, he was a great shot he was around firearms at the time he was very very small and he was uh, used to muzzle loading devices uh, he owned a, his first firearm was a muzzle loading shotgun uh, it was a 12 gauge I don't know actually what it was I don't know what caliber it was anyways it was a shotgun um, so anyways, he's got a cap, okay? He has two exposed hammers, all right? And, or, or at least one. I don't know if it's a double barrel or single. It's probably a single barrel uh, muzzle-loading shotgun, okay? He's got to put, put uh, powder in it, okay? He's got to put uh, caps on the little nipples there. He's going to have exposed hammers. Uh, he's going to have to put birdshot in there or whatever he's using to shoot. Well, he would shoot with his with his good friend, a childhood friend, you know, he's 10, 12 years old. He'd go down by the railroad tracks uh, and he would shoot uh, jackrabbits, all right, and to feed their family. And uh, he would go out uh, pretty much every day as a child, especially in the summertime, uh, if he wasn't in school. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he was out there uh, one day and he, they would, they would the hot summer sun, and he would uh, pause with his friend, they'd sit it on the railroad tracks, and they would lay in their shotguns, okay, uh, with the muzzles up uh, against the, the steel rails of the railroad track. Well, steel on steel barrel, does not. there's not much friction there. And what happened is the rifle would slide off and it would, it would bang on the hammer. There's no safety of any kind. Even though the hammer was closed, okay, it wasn't cocked. He'd release it and close it on the, on the, uh, on the cap, all right, fulminated mercury cap. And if it gets some kind of a shock, okay, it would go off. Well, that's what happened. It would slide on the railroad tracks and it slid down, bang, and it went off. And it it missed him. It it, it shot. It slid towards him. The muzzle slid towards him, and it shot right across his bowels. And he says, for the life of him, he said it was a miracle. He says he had no idea how he survived that because it was pointed right at him, but somehow he survived. Uh, a year or two later, his, uh, one of his best friends that he used to go shooting with uh, was actually found completely disemboweled. The shotgun went off and exactly the same thing happened and it disemboweled him and he was down there laying in his gore um, on the railroad tracks. Uh, another negligent discharge. Don't lay your weapon. Uh, if you're gonna lay it, don't don't lean it against a tree. Just lay it down. If you have to lay it down, lay it down. Okay, so it can't fall over. All right. A word to the wise: learn from somebody else's mistakes. Else's mistakes. Um, a uh, okay. A childhood friend of mine. Uh, I will call him uh, Adam. <coughs> Not his real name. Uh, we were shooting buddies, and uh, he's at home. Uh, this is in Southern California. And uh, back in the days when, you know, you could own a gun in California, it wasn't against the law. Uh, he had a, uh, I believe it was a 22, uh, And uh, he, he thought, it, of course, that it was unloaded. 
and uh, he pointed it out towards a neighbor's house uh, across the street from his bedroom window and pointed to the garage, you know, nothing, not really pointing it, just aim it, and he pulled the trigger. Well, he figured it was unloaded, okay, he violated one of the four rules of gun safety. And it fired, it fired through the window and uh, hit the garage uh, of a neighbor across the street. <laughs> what he immediately did, his mom was downstairs, uh, she didn't even hear the bang, but he, he swung the rifle and broke the window. <laughs> this is an aside here. He, he shattered the window and then ran downstairs and said, yelled, Mom, Mom, I'm so sorry. I was swinging my rifle around and I was putting it away or some, something like that. And it broke, broke my window accidentally. Well, because he would have been in big, big trouble if he had, to, had a negligent discharge. Uh, he was from Oklahoma. Great guy. He's still into guns. But, uh, <laughs> Anyways, that's how he covered it. And then later he went over to the neighbor's house, tried to look for the, sure enough, he found the bullet hole. Uh, it, it actually didn't go in the, it went in the garage, but not the garage door. It was a vertical section and uh, hit that, but nobody was hurt. But he kept that under wrap. Negligent discharge. Uh, another one, uh, law enforcement. Uh, it happens all the time in law enforcement. Anytime you have a person who is handling firearms, we are human beings. Just because you have negligent discharge does not mean that you're an idiot or that you're stupid, okay? It means that you're being careless, all right? It doesn't mean that you're stupid forever, all right? Anybody who's been around firearms and handles firearms frequently, odds are they have been around or had their own negligent discharge. I had one of my own, all right? Um, and you can call me stupid. You can call me an idiot. That's fine. You can, whatever. But learn from my mistakes so you know we don't become stupid and you're not an idiot okay you're much smarter than me all right uh this was the firearms instructor uh the range officer for the uh department that i worked for all right we had just come in I, this happened in front of my own eyes <clears throat> uh we had come in he was carrying a uh loaded well it wasn't loaded he thought it was unloaded of course it was loaded we're talking about negligent discharges uh he walks in he walks into the sergeant's office uh, the sergeant wasn't there. I, I don't know why he walked into the sergeant's office, but he was carrying a shotgun, 12 gauge, pointed up. <clears throat> uh, and for some reason, he he pulled the trigger on it. It was pointed up. Well, he pulled the trigger, and this 12 gauge goes off. I'm doing reports just right around the corner, you know, 15 feet away from it. I hear the enormous kablooey. I turn, I'm, I'm drawing my weapon. I think we're under attack. And here comes Drew walking out, like with his dazed, oh my gosh, I said his name. Uh, okay, I'll continue on. I won't edit it out, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he doesn't watch these videos anyways. Anyway, see, he comes out, <laughs> and he's got this ashen look on his face, like, why did I hear a big bang? I don't understand what happened. And uh, the sergeant goes walking around the corner, and he, he looks in there and he smells the gun smoking. Looks up at the ceiling. And there's this. It's double lock buck. And there's this hole. And it was about. It was about. I won't exaggerate. It was about this big in the ceiling. <laughs> he goes. Nice pattern. And walks out and goes back to what he was doing. <clears throat> well, we run upstairs because it was two stories, and it had gone through the floor. And I knew that the the uh, lieutenant's office was upstairs. Uh, he wasn't in his office. He was having coffee, which is usually what he did. Uh, for a living, have coffee and visit. Anyways, uh, he wasn't in his office and it had gone through the floor and in the floor was a hole about this big around, a little bit bigger, and it went up and it hit the doorknob of his closed office, which wasn't locked. He never locked his office for some reason. He never did any work, so there wasn't anything uh, confidential in there. Anyways, it had hit the doorknob and you saw where uh, two, yeah, there were two uh, scored lines in there where it dented the the, uh, the round doorknob and then gone up into the ceiling, into the ceiling tiles. <clears throat> well, we ran up there and uh, uh, this was after, that's right, he wasn't in because this was after hours, so a known administration was in at this point. And uh, we went up, we changed the doorknob uh, and swapped it for another one, kept the lock, locking mechanism, of course, but, but, but uh, changed out the doorknob in the back, uh, cut some carpet from a closet. Uh, patched the hole with some uh, just some garbage and some sawdust and some some glue and, and, and whatever uh, I don't remember what it was epoxy I think it was 
and to fix that up, you never knew that it ever, and replace the ceiling tie, you never knew that it ever occurred. Uh, we didn't tell administration, and we didn't want this officer getting in trouble. He would have been, a, been put on probation and possibly lost his job. It's not worth it. Um, yeah, we hit it. Um, we'll talk about me next. I had an AD. We had, uh, I'll tell you the story, we had just uh, received um, new sidearms. We've gone from 357 Magnums to uh, Smith & Wesson, uh, I think they were 686, I, I don't recall, but it was an auto loader. Big, clunky, heavy thing. Uh, felt like a two by four in your hand. Um, anyways, we went to these things and uh, we were, I was still getting used to it and I was dry firing it, trying to get used, get used to the action and how it worked. It was, I was new to semi-autos, completely new. Most of us, most all of us in the department were new to semi-autos, except for the guys who were, uh, that had been in Vietnam. Of course, they carried 45s, uh, Colt 45s. Anyways, uh, getting used to them. And I'm, I'm messing with my gun in front of the TV downstairs. All the kids are in bed. And uh, anyways, I, I'm playing with the gun and I've been dry firing it, pointing it at the TV, watching some movie, I don't know, with my wife. And uh, it's about nine o'clock, 9.30 at night. And I'm, I'm pointing this thing at the TV. You never point your weapon at anything you don't want to destroy. All right, that's one of the four rules. And I was violating that rule. Uh, in law enforcement, we used to do that all the time. We would violate those four rules. It's really dumb to do that. And they didn't have toy guns safe guns, you know, orange or blue guns. They simply didn't make them, or at least I was unaware of them back then. Anyways, I was messing with the gun. I was dry firing over and over and over and over. It's good to dry fire a gun. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> but what what happened is when you're dry firing a gun, okay, you don't have any ammunition around, all right? And I was following that rule, all right? And I was dry firing and pointing it at the TV, you know. And, uh, of course, it's an unloaded weapon. And, uh, and my wife, after I was done fire, dry firing, she says, well, I don't understand how, she's walking, watching me rack it and so forth, she says, how does a, it get a bullet from the magazine into the, to the muzzle, in, not the muzzle, but into the spout, into the pipe of the firearm? And I said, well, and I went upstairs and I grabbed my, my magazine, and I, it wasn't this firearm. Uh, and I, I dropped it in there and I showed her very slowly and I, I showed her how it works, how, how it recalls. It comes back after it fires, the slide comes back and it picks up another round and it slides it up the feed ramp and strips it from the magazine and drops it into the chamber. And I showed her how to do that. And, and she goes, oh, and I, then I said, when it fires, then it comes back and it ejected that round. Okay, and then it slams another one forward and it strips another uh, round off the magazine and puts it in the chamber, it's ready to fire. And then I did what I'd done a thousand times before for an hour in front of the TV. I went like that and pointed at that TV. Well, the TV goes, it goes kaboom. The TV, well, the TV did go boom. <laughs> Big old bullet hole in the TV, all right? That's pretty thick glass, old style. This happened in the 80s, uh, mid 80s, about in 1984. And uh, hits the TV, there's this blue green flame that comes out uh, of the television set through this hole. And of course, it goes black immediately. And uh, so much the end of our, our uh, color TV. I went and bought a black black and white TV from the pawn shop. But uh, glass goes everywhere, it showers everywhere, you know. And it's like my wife and I look at each other and it's like, what was that noise? Well, you know, that was our first reaction. How did this happen? It was my negligence, okay, my own stupidity. Um, if Once you're done dry firing your weapon, you put it away. You load it up, put it away, you don't mess with it anymore. You don't show anybody anything, you just put it away because you, you just your brain is in that dry firing mode. Uh, and stupidly, I was pointing at something that uh, you know, I really didn't want to destroy the TV. Uh, don't point it at anything you don't want to destroy. All right? The other negligent discharge, and yes, I'm calling this a negligent discharge. This is uh, because it was. This uh, happened right next to me in the firing line. We were, we were practicing, uh, we had a department shoot, we had them every few months. And we shot uh, two or three times more often than the state required us to. Anyways, uh, uh, guy next to me, I'll call him uh, Jerry. Uh, that's not his real name. And he's fire firing next to me. He's shooting an auto loader. And he's 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 firing. He's going boom, boom, boom. And this guy was really hard of hearing. He had ear protection on, but he really couldn't hear well and wasn't wearing any. Uh, hearing amplifying device, which he really needed. 
But uh, anyways, he's firing, and he's right next to me. I'm standing far, just this far away from him, um, about four feet away. And he's firing, and I see out of my peripheral vision, I know he pulled the trigger, and nothing happened, all right? And what's he do? What does he do? He did what he was trained to do, okay, which is really poor training, okay? You don't do this on the firing line, and I wouldn't do this in combat either. But we were taught to tap, rack, and then fire again, okay? What had happened, we were using reloaded ammunition, and you can get a, this can happen with manufactured ammunition as well. We were firing reloaded ammunition because it was cheaper, the sheriff's office didn't want to spend the money. And what happened is he had a squib, all right? He fired around a cartridge that had uh, a primer in it, but no gunpowder. So what happened is that it didn't eject the round, but it did send the bullet into the firing chamber. He sent it halfway down the barrel, or a third of the way down the barrel. What he did is he tapped it, he racked it like he was trained to, okay? And then he fired, and I'm right, I'm saying, stop, stop, you know, don't shoot. And just as I'm facing him, saying, no, because I know he's going to blow up his gun. And he fires. He fires another round on top of this bullet, this jammed half or a third of the way down of his barrel. Fired another round on top of it. Kaboom! Makes this huge, loud explosion, all right? Luckily, the slide, uh, it was just, uh, I don't know from all slide, pretty tough. Um, it didn't blow it off, but it, it blew the slide back part way, and it was, it, was, it was in this position about right here. And right up here, uh, it was just bowed out. And this huge, looked like, it, uh, looked like a, uh, uh, a snake that had swallowed a rat or something. This huge, huge bulge right here. Of course, it blew out his barrel, blew out the sides of his slide. He couldn't work the action anymore. And uh, the guy who did our reloads for us, ended up having to replace uh, the slide and barrel on that firearm. Um, I believe it was a nine millimeter. Uh, it was a real, it was a beautiful gun. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I didn't blow my face off or blow blow his uh, his hands off, lose, lose fingers and so forth. Um, anyways, if that happens, all right, if it goes, you, you need to find out what the problem is. If that happens and you're in combat, all right, I would not tap rack. I would go to my backup weapon, all right, pull that out, drop the other gun, and, f and c continue firing. Go to your rifle, all right. You need to have a backup of some kind. Uh, or get the heck out of Dodge. You don't don't need that weapon uh, blowing up in your hand. Uh, but that's just my take on it. You might have a different opinion. Uh, yeah, it's negligent discharge. He wasn't educated enough to realize it. No, putting if you've got a bad round in there, all right. You need that thing out of there, all right? And it's probably down your pipe someplace. Don't drop another round on it because that weapon is going to be permanently disabled for the rest of the fight until it can go back to an armor, all right? Anyways, those are my, my negligent discharges, NDs, all right? They're not accidents. Uh, they happen because we're either ignorant or foolish or just flat out stupid. Uh, but we are, we are human beings and we make mistakes. You can call it stupidity if you want to, whatever. All right. Be careful with firearms. Four rules of firearm safety, okay? Treat every weapon as if it was loaded. Number two, make sure your target and what's behind your target. Number three, and this might not be in order, it doesn't matter. Number three, never point at anything you don't want to destroy. All right. And number four, I'm brain dead and I can't think of number one, four, number, what number four is. All right. All right, something to talk about other things. All right, be careful, guys. Talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.